So you're minding your own business and you get this sudden arc or flash of light out in the periphery of your vision. Maybe driving at night, you think that there's a lightning flash, you think that there's a car in your rear view mirror and it's not there. You turn your head again, another little flash of light. And you panic a little bit. You get home safely, you get on Google or Bing, for anybody who uses Bing, uh, you go to what's wrong with me.com and you type it all in and the message is you may be having a retina detachment go to your doctor does this sound familiar it's actually very common I hear it all the time almost every day so you go to your doctor they dilate your pupil their obligation and their expectation is to look at your retina and they look around they say it looks pretty good I don't see any holes retinal tears retinal detachments you have this thing going on with your vitreous uh, come back and see me in about six weeks. We'll check it again to make sure everything's okay. So you walk out the door a bit reassured and still wondering why you've got some new things floating around in your vision. Uh, that evening you're, you're uh, in the dark driving again. You get that little flashes of light. So what's going on? Probably what's happening is what's called a posterior vitreous detachment. Not to be confused with a retina detachment. A posterior vitreous detachment is very, very common. So let's talk a little bit about some of the basics of the eye and what the vitreous is and what might very well be going on and what to be concerned about. Okay, so again, we go to our standard eye, a cross section of the eyeball, just to break it down for you. This is the globe, this is the optics up front, the cornea and the lens. Uh, the retina is this here in red, although it's really more of an orange color. Uh, in real life. It's uh, this orangey uh, uh, frog your hair. All of the uh, rods and cones and photoreceptors are in that retina. They take that information, send it back via the optic nerve here, back to the brain where the brain processes it and you get vision. That's, that's the basics, right? This space here, unlike the camera, camera body, which is just filled with air, this uh, here is filled with a fluid that we call the vitreous. That vitreous is mostly water. Okay, not particularly interesting from an academic sense, from a sciencey kind of standpoint. About 99% 99% water, so they say. The remaining is collagen proteins. Now, collagen proteins are not living, breathing cells. Okay, they uh, do not have an active metabolism. They are not taking in oxygen. They are not uh, taking in nutrients. They're fairly inert and fairly bland. They are these long-stranded molecules. They're a little bit sticky. Uh, so they do have a, a bit of an anti-stick coating. And it'd be much like if you're familiar with, um, with um, fiberglass, fiberglass strands. Fiberglass strands are these very thin and flexible strands of glass, literally. And if you've ever seen loose fiberglass, um, it is a microscopically thin. Uh, they are just loose little strands and uh, sort of schematically represented as these just loose, long strands like this. Now. If you've ever seen how a surfboard is made or a fiberglass boat hull or, or anything made with fiberglass, uh, they don't just throw loose fiberglass on there. They take fiberglass that has been organized and it has been woven uh, into a cloth or a matting. In this case, you can take these strands here and you can weave them into a cloth and now you have something that is much more organized. It's the same stuff, it's just more organized. So instead of uh, taking uh, you know, fiberglass strands and tossing them into a pool and having the, uh, the, the, uh, the jacuzzi jets sort of swirl that stuff around, it's like taking a cloth and dropping it in the pool. It's going to stay together and you know, eventually kind of sink, but it's, it's, it's going to stay organized as this cloth. Well, why am I talking about fiberglass? Well, because it's a good analogy for this vitreous, right? So in the main part of the vitreous, it is like having these, these long, loose and random strands of collagen proteins all about like this, right? Now, what makes it gel-like and so that these things don't uh, just sink to the bottom is there's some cross-linking, there is some organization to that vitreous that gives it a gel. In fact, the vitreous, uh, the chemist might best describe the vitreous as a viscoelastic fluid. It's viscous because it's thicker than water, it's elastic because it has those gel properties, and that's the vitreous. It is a remnant of the. It is a remnant and leftover of the very early fetal embryologic development of the eye. It just is. Now, there is a baggie or a sac, a lining, uh, a lining on the inside of the vitreous, or a baggie or sac for the outside of, of, of the vitreous. I'm sorry, a lining of the retina, a baggie or sac to the outside of the vitreous. Excuse me. 
um, that is a bit more organized. It is, a, it is like this fiberglass cloth. Uh, it is this semi-permeable membrane of this, these same collagen proteins, and it lines the inside of the back of the eye, seen here in blue. Um, and it is something that we don't normally talk about. I'm looking for my little cloth here. There we go. Um, it is not something that we really talk about very much. In fact, uh, for a typical eye examination, the money is in either the front part of the eye with the cornea, the lens, uh, this angle here where the cornea and the, and the iris come together. That's where the fluid normally drains. That's where we're concerned about glaucoma. Uh, then the other action is in the retina, the macula here, the optic nerve. Um, you know, our examination tends to focus towards the front part of the eye and towards the back part of the eye, and that's where we go. We just kind of skip right over the vitreous. Now, the exception to that is when somebody experiences a posterior vitreous detachment. What is that? Well, this is age-related. Um, there is a, 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 def a definite association between aging and the onset incidence of posterior vitreous detachments. So if we were to randomly find people on the street that are 60 years old, just had their 60th birthday, and we brought them in and we examined their eyes, we'd find a good 25% of them will have experienced a posterior vitreous detachment. That doesn't mean 25% have any sort of eye problems or even complaints necessarily, or floaters. Uh, they have just had this anatomical shift, which I'll, I'll explain in just a moment. That rate goes up to 60% of 80-year-olds, so clearly age-related. And by the way, sidebar here, if you're 25 years old and you have some floaters and your doctor told you that you've had a PVD, I would bet against that. It would be a very good bet that it is not actually a true PVD. So what is a PVD? Well, as we age and this vitreous kind of liquefies a bit, you have a bit more of free water. I'll just kind of put some little waves in there. It's a little bit more liquidy rather than gel-like. When we're younger, the vitreous is gel-like. As we age, it becomes a little more liquidy. This water uh, can find its way in little breaches or, or breaks in that, um, that vitreous cortex, that outer shell there, and can actually cause an abrupt uh, shift. I'll remove that there. Find our blue here. And you can get an abrupt shift or separation of that membrane away from the back of the retina there. Uh, there is an opening there, right? I'm sorry. There's an opening right around where that optic nerve is here. Some of the fluid has gotten behind there. So it doesn't create a vacuum or a bubble or an absence of anything like that. It's just a shift of fluids. Um, it'd be like if you had a wet surface, you put some plastic down on the surface, and, and it wants to kind of stick from the surface tension, but you squirted a jet of water underneath that, and that, that piece of plastic would just come right off really easy. And it is. It is not. It is not attached with strong cellular bonds. It's, it's attached but very loosely and water can disrupt that and you can get that membrane to come off there. So what's the concern? Well, most of the retinal holds, tears, and detachments out in the periphery of the retina are caused by this vitreous pulling away and separating away. Why is that? Well, if it's incomplete. So if it pulls away mostly, but it hasn't pulled away yet here, as this vitreous is moving around, you can get some traction and pulling and tugging on that retina right there, and that's where you can get a retinal hole or a tear or a detachment. Fortunately, that's relatively rare. Um, maybe in, you know, less than 5%, just a few percent of people who have a PVD will have a, a true retinal problem, but the risk exists. exists. So when that has pulled away completely, you have this sort of redundant uh, extra little membrane. You have fluid on both sides. You have a little breach and a break there. And once it's pulled away completely from the peripheral retina there, you should no longer have any uh, holes, tears, or, or, or risk of any holes, tears, or detachments, or even the flashing of light anymore. Because again, uh, that pulling and tugging not only puts the retina at risk, but that's where the flashes of light come from. It's the internal traction and pulling and tugging on that retina. The retina cells can't feel anything. They can't feel vibration or warm or cold or touch, but they can only sense light. They can only send information back to the brain, and the brain says, oh, there's light, there's a light source. Well, there's no light source. You're just, you're just seeing what it tends to be a flash of light. So very typically, the course of a, a PVD is it's sudden onset. Uh, you don't have to have been doing anything, although some blunt trauma, an elbow to the eye, uh, uh, what have I heard, a, a, a baby hitting <laughs> uh, a toddler, uh, whacking grandma in the face, uh, dog snout hitting you. you know, blunt trauma can, of course, you know, distort the eye very quickly. But most of the time, they're just minding their own business, and this thing occurs out of the blue, and you rush in to see the doctor. So, 
The vast majorities will eventually separate, and as it separates, no more traction, no more flashes of light. Uh, and, and, interestingly enough, once that vitreous is separated, you are now in your lifetime's lowest risk of retinal hole tear and detachment. But you have this membrane sort of ebbing and flowing in the tide and in the breeze there. Well, how do you reattach that? The short answer is, you don't. You can't. There is no reattachment of that membrane. It is not considered to be an eye health problem. And by the way, it, it should really be renamed something else because it sounds too, too similar to retinal detachment. You know, vitreous detachment, retinal detachment. In fact, the reason I'm doing this video is someone had just written me a, um, an email asking about this and they, they had, uh, the way that it was uh, sort of lay translated to them was, my retina lifted and the gel separated. Well, no, your retina didn't lift. It's a shift of fluids and that vitreous membrane peeled off the back there. Um, that's how it is. So this is a PVD. This is the posterior vitreous detachment. Uh, not post vitreous, it is posterior vitreous detachment, or PVD for short. That's, that's the term we throw around there. Now, there are some variations of this. One of those is that occasionally, and a small percentage of people, where that membrane normally sits here just so happens to have a particular thickening of that material there. This is without any symptoms because this is actually a blind spot. There are no rods and cones in this area right here. So this thickening of that membrane, it's static, it's right up against the retina, it has no symptoms whatsoever. If this person has a PVD, now they might have something uh, denser, thicker, fibrous, uh, a little bit different than this transparent membrane. And this person may have a very bothersome floater. Uh, this is uh, in its most classic form, it can be actually a ring, and we call it a Weiss ring. I always thought it was named after Dr. Weiss somewhere in Austria or Germany back in the 1800s. No, it's actually a white, the German word for white is Weiss. So it is a Weiss ring, it is a white ring. White ring. When you shine a light in the eye, it, it shines back as this creamy circle. Now, it doesn't actually have to be a ring. It can be anything. It can be a clump. It can look like a transparent insect wing. It can be a couple of little fragments of a ring. It can be an arc. It can be just about anything. The, the, the reason it's important to distinguish these from my perspective, since I treat floaters, is these are very amenable to treatment. I love to see these walk into my office because they're great to treat. So. Uh, what are we going to add? So I guess bottom line is a posterior vitreous detachment is a common age-related related phenomenon. Uh, the reason the books say get in and see your doctor right away is because for that small percentage of, of, of possibility, uh, you could be at risk for a retinal detachment. And anytime there is a retinal hole or tear or true detachment, uh, you always want to get at that sooner than later. You don't want to wait, uh, and I've had, I'm going back to my general ophthalmology career, I remember a, a gentleman said, yeah, I've had, I had this curtain across my vision, and it just kept uh, advancing, 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 advancing. Finally, I came in when it came across the center. Well, what, what was happening is the retina was detaching, and finally it peeled off you know, from the center there. That's a lot harder to fix, and the prognosis for good vision after that is not very good. If you can catch these things early, yeah, that's why they recommend going in and seeing your doctor. Totally appropriate. Now, where my practice deviates from many of these other doctors is they will say, give it time, it'll go away, come back and see me in six weeks for, for a re-examination. Uh, you come back for that six weeks, they say, oh, no more flashes, PVD is completed, uh, retina looks good, good, off you go. And you still have this thing floating around in there, that's your eye floater. Um, and what brings people to me is when they say, well, great, I'm glad that my retina is healthy, but what about the floater? Uh, and that's the stuff that I treat. So um, that is a posterior vitreous detachment, a bit wordy than it probably needed, as always. Um, but I get a lot of people a little bit of confusion about what a PVD is. They're very, very common, not considered to be an eye health condition, nor are the floaters. My entire practice is not treating emergencies or, or, or life-threatening or vision-threatening conditions. It's trying to restore the quality of life uh, that you enjoyed up till you had your floaters. So, um, I think I'll just end it there. Um, as always, uh, I'll ask that you uh, subscribe and like and so other people can find me. That's really what it's all about. And um, visit my website at thefloaterdoctor.com uh, because there is where all this information is. Um, and you can contact me, you can ask uh, for, if you want to talk to me on the phone, make that request. I'll be glad to talk to you about your particular details. But before you do, please read through the website because um, 
95, 99% of the questions that people have are really already answered there. Uh, things like fees and does insurance cover it and, and, and how do I schedule, um, uh, how many days, do I need a driver, do I need someone to take care of me, are there restrictions on activities, can I fly afterwards, all that kind of stuff is described in detail. So go there first, if it doesn't answer your particulars, I'll be glad to try to do so over the phone, by email, whatever. Um, that's just part of my practice. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next topic that just decides to inspire me to do another video. Okay, great. Have a good day.